Okay guys, this is going to be a presentation on how to purchase a car based on my experiences. I'm going to try to keep it short, as short as possible. I've got a lot of topics to discuss, so let's get started. Uh, here's the agenda. We're going to start with an introduction. I'll tell you about your biggest strengths, being prepared both physically and mentally, doing your homework, uh, bring in the spreadsheets that I will show you. Uh, we'll talk about purchasing a new car versus used car in the current market. Uh, and then the process of wrapping up the sale, doing the test drive, uh, closing the deal, and then the mini boss, which is the person that comes to try to sell you the add-ons, and the final boss, who is the person that will sign the lease, uh, paperwork, uh, financial loan, etc. I'm trying to go a little bit quick here. I got a lot of topics to discuss, but this is YouTube. You can always just go back and... and and review the information I've given you or just ask in the comments below, okay? Uh, so who am I? I am a father, husband, average Joe homeowner that has uh, middle class income. So I've been able to purchase vehicles in the past. Uh, I started with, a, I think it was a 1993 Toyota Corolla when I was in college, purchased it for very cheap, eventually, uh, you know, it died, and then I traded that into the 2012 Camry, then traded that into a 2018 Camry, and then the latest one we've purchased for the family was a 2020 RAV4. Uh, I've helped friends with the same advice. I've been kind of perf <laughs> uh, perfecting it. I've been, you know, honing in on the actual things that I want to uh, pass along to my friends and family, so I'll do it in this video. Hopefully you guys learned something from it as well. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to the people that have inspired me to learn this stuff. Uh, my friend Adam from uh, when I used to work with him. Um, he basically is the mar smartest person I know. He gave me the, the rundown on how to use the spreadsheet uh, that shows you the monthly breakdown and, and how, how useful that is. So thank you, Adam. And to the old man at the car wash who inspired me one afternoon to go and sell my 2012 um, Camry as a trading and, and upgrade to the 2018. Um, he had a lot of valuable lessons that day at the car wash. So uh, let's let's move on here. Uh, your biggest strengths. Uh, first one, the ability to say no and walk away. I've done this a couple times at a couple dealerships. Uh, one of them uh, wouldn't budge. On a thousand dollars, I walked away, purchased it at a different uh, dealer. They called me back, insulting me, saying how I was making a big mistake that they'll drop the thousand now. This was after the fact that I had already purchased it. So, you know, if they are willing <laughs> to budge, uh, they they will. So just walk away if you don't feel comfortable. Um, and then the other time I walked away, it was because they wouldn't go down five hundred dollars. Uh, they wanted five hundred dollars for uh, shipping fee or something like that to get the right color of the vehicle. I said no. So walked away and uh, purchased the RAV4 somewhere else. Um, come prepare with research. We'll go over what to bring. It's very important. It shows that you've done your homework and lets the, the salesperson know that um, that they can't really, you know, um, get the most out of you, I guess. You know, uh, value your time as well. How, how much do you want to spend in a dealership? Uh, it's up to you, but you can spend a few minutes like I've done in the past or or hours like I did it with my first purchase uh, in a trade-in. If you have a trade-in, this is a, a huge uh, uh, benefit. It's your ACE card. Don't show it up front. Uh, we'll discuss this in a little bit, um, but basically uh, keep that a secret, okay, at, at the beginning. Do not throw it into the negotiations right away. Um, and then value your time when you're getting a trading quote. I've been in a dealership for 45 minutes getting a quote on the trade-in. And I learned my lesson there. I told them the next time I, I the next time I went to get a trade-in value, I told them don't waste my time. And they came back with a price. I think it was like 10 minutes after. Uh, be prepared. All right. So physically by that, I mean... Bring the printouts that I'm going to show you. Do your homework. Uh, get these guys uh, printed out. You know, if you don't have a printer, uh, what is it? FedEx, Kinko's, Staples, 
Um, if you don't have Excel, uh, Google Sheets, I think, is free. So just use something to, to make the, the charts I'm going to show you. And print them out and bring them to the dealership with you. And mentally, uh, you know, just these quick points uh, kind of hype you up. Uh, they need your business and not the other way around. Uh, you can always walk away, go to a different dealership. So if you don't feel comfortable with what they're offering you, you know, there's other options out there. Um, be polite. You never want to insult people. Um, but ver but be, be assertive. St um, stick to the game plan. Stick to what your budget is, the, car, the options that you want on the car. Um, so, yeah, just be assertive and, and stick to the game plan that you've prepared. And uh, I say, like, don't don't show emotions uh you know you want them you know they, they'll sort of see that you're excited and they'll try to get you to buy that vehicle at their price um so if you're indifferent about it it might be easier to get a better price uh okay moving on uh research tools all right so as Nicki minaj said do your own research uh, I don't think she was talking about cars, but it's a great quote, and I think it applies here. Uh, my favorite website to do my research was uh, TrueCar.com. You can customize the vehicle you want, or you can buy in, like existing packages. Um, I use this car. I use this website to do the RAV4, and I think to also look at the 2018 uh, options. Um, so you can get from this website, you can get regional and national values that shows you the average uh, uh, of the price, the cost of the vehicle that you're looking at. Uh, and, and it also also shows you a graph um, showing you a fair price. Uh, so good website to, to look at. Um, I will show you an examples of what, what, what it prints out in a little bit. For uh, another comparison point, you can use a dealer's website. You can see what they're selling as far as new vehicles, uh, their MSRP price. Um, you can also use a their used vehicle lot, etc. So that's another point of reference that I think is a, a, a great option to include in your spreadsheet. And you can also use uh, truecar.com to estimate the value of your trading so you know what to expect kelly blue book i think that's the same thing um you want to have an idea of how much your trading is worth before going there so that you can get the most out of it uh, and remember this is your ace card so you want to know the value of that when you play it you want to know how important that is um as you can see right here at the in circled in yellow this is what we're after when you use truecar.com. Uh, it's the average others ha uh, have paid or other offers. And you can click on that and it will show you something like this. So this is what 39 other consumers paid originally for a 2022 Toyota Camry hybrid LE, you know, CVT forward wheel drive. So as you can see, this, this graph... Um, it's telling you every everything from an excellent price, a great price, down to a, a high price. Uh, it's it's a great tool. I, I love this graph. Uh, I've used it to uh, just compare the price of the RAV4. I think the 2018 Camry as well. I sent it to a friend. I told him, you know, check it check it out. Um, here's another example of what it looks like if you if you hover over it with your mouse. It'll tell you, hey, this is a great price uh, it's one to two percent off or above MSRP and I believe when I looked for the RAV4 uh, graph on, on mine for the 2020 um, I believe it said like seven I, oh let's see I think I have it here yes here it is it's a little blurry but this was back in 2020 when I did it and as you can see right here uh, it was three to seven percent off MSRP was a great price, and I think when I paid what I purchased my RAV4 for ended up being like eight percent, seven to eight percent. So I got somewhere between a great and an excellent price for it. Uh, so again, use use this graph. Uh, I'll tell you how to use it in a, in a little bit, but make sure you get something like this for the car you want to buy. Uh, 
why do you need the spreadsheets? Uh, <laughs> dealers hate quote unquote smart people. You know, they are, it's easier for them to sell a, a car to a person that doesn't know what they're going in there for. These people are professional sales persons and uh, sales people, uh, salesman, saleswoman, I don't know. Uh, they're professionals trying to sell you a car. They, they get a commission out of it. They have to make certain uh, profits. So if you don't know anything, they're going to try to uh, increase those margins. If you go in there knowing your stuff and knowing what the fair market value is of your car, uh, they'll see that you have done your homework and, you know, they won't be giving you all that BS that they typically do. So there's two types of spreadsheet you'll need to prepare. The total cost breakdown, which will inc include everything from MSRP to taxes and fees, etc., and then you can compare the dealer's MSRP versus the average market that you got from truecar.com. And then the other spreadsheet will be the monthly payment breakdown. This is your budget spreadsheet. This is how much you're going to be with. How much, um, if you take out a loan, not everybody, I guess, if you go straight by it and fully pay for the car, you don't need this. But most people will have a loan, either through the bank or through the dealer. Uh, and so how much are you going to pay monthly uh, based on the loan amount uh, is, is what this spreadsheet is trying to do. And then you're going to pick a green zone. The green zone is going to be, I guess, uh, what determines if, if they're offering you a good deal. If you're within that green zone, then they have a, you guys shake hands and, and you got to purchase. It's, uh, let me take a sip of water here. Uh, so here's a total cost breakdown sheet. Uh, I used Excel for this. Uh, as you can see on the top, the top half is the dealerships uh, breakdown. And the bottom half is what I got off the um, true car uh, research. Uh, I, right here I have uh, MSRP. Then how much percent off MSRP is... Uh, are, are you going to expect zero to 15 percent hopefully you don't pay above uh hopefully <laughs> I'm, okay never mind i don't want to say that um hopefully yeah you're not paying above msrp right you don't I, that's why i don't have negative numbers here um and the only reason i'm i'm, I'm bringing this up is because i just looked at a car uh, I don't even remember what model it was on truecar.com and the MSR, the, the, the good price or the fair price was like two to 3% above MSRP. So I was a little confused, but I guess for that particular model, new model this year, it was being sold above MSRP. Uh, so I guess the market changes for some cars. Um, so please try to you know keep that in mind I, i'm not showing negative numbers here but you could end up paying higher than msrp for certain models right now hopefully you're you're above uh, on the top part of these graphs you're saving somewhere between seven and fifteen percent off as msrp so the next columns you're just going to show you the price any incentives they might be offering you can check out their dealership website and sometimes uh, for example, they had a thousand dollars off if I finance through them. Um, so this, after that is the price, after the incentive, your state tax, the cost of the car plus the tax, any document fees. Sometimes they charge between like three hundred to six hundred dollars to file the documents. So you want to have an idea of what the total cost of the car is after everything. Now you take this cost. Um, and you figure out how much you're going to put as a down payment. Uh, and that will be the, for the next sheet. So this total cost right here on the right is not including your down payment. This right here is including your down payment. On the left is the loan amount. How much you're going to be financing through the dealership, through the bank. And... This is what I'm talking about, the green zone right here. These are the different APR uh, columns, the percentages 
I have any went from 2.5 APR to five and a half. Hopefully you're below that. Uh, hopefully you get a good deal on a, on a loan. Uh, but the important part here is the green zone. That is how much I could afford monthly when I purchased this vehicle. And if the dealership gave me a price that put me within this green zone, uh, then they had a then they had a deal. That's how that's how I, I simply told them, and that's how it worked with the Rav4. I said, put me in this green zone, and you've got yourself a deal. And so, uh, that I think that transaction took like five minutes in the dealership. Um, how to use the monthly payment breakdown and and how to generate one? This is the formula that I use. You can use the PMT formula. It on the left. Uh, it's uh, PMT rate and PER, PV, FV type. That's the full formula, but you don't need to use the last two parameters. So you can just use the rate and the, um, I think it's the number of payments and the, uh, the P value. What's the P value stand for? Hold on. I got it right here. Uh, Yeah, the NPR is the number of periods the loan will be paid back over, and the PV stands for present value. So it's for how big the loan is. It's, yeah, it's just the word for how big the loan is. So just use the simplified version. I found it much easier to, to use in Excel. And do remember that the formula is using a different parameter than the APR, so you do have to divide the rate by 12. Um, you can... You can try to use this formula, and then when you have the spreadsheet out, you can verify it using online calculators. There's other, there's tons of free websites that do this for you. It, you enter the monthly payments that you want to make, uh, the loan amount, and and then it spits out how much um, how much is each payment is going to be. So you can uh, use both to verify that your math is correct in in Excel. Uh, here's a formula, like I said. So uh, if you're looking at the top part over here of the formula, it's going to be the uh, the rate divided by 12. Uh, and then it's going to be the number of uh, periods. So it's your months, how many months you're going to be paying this. Uh, and then the final uh, parameter is the loan amount. Um, Right here in column B, I have the breakdown for 2.5%. So that's what went into my uh, into my initial parameter divided that we divide by 12, and then the column C, I changed that to 2.75 and three, and then three, and so forth. Yeah. So that's um, that's it for that. Make sure you have this, and, and it'll, it'll be very useful to bring it up. Um, why use the spreadsheets? Uh, they're confidence builders. They're, you, you're going in there knowing that you've done your homework, and they're going to see that. Uh, it helps you stick to the plan. You look at your spreadsheet, and you want to be in that green zone. Don't get out of it. Um, and, like... Uh, yeah, I guess I guess I'm saying this thing over again, but it lets the salesperson know that you've done your homework, and they don't, you know, typically don't don't expect you to to do that. Um, when to use them? Uh, you can start talking to the person, say, hey, I'm interested in this car, or hey, what? Show me what you got in the lot. Pretend that you don't already know what you want, um, and then when it comes to talking price you ask them okay where, where do we start and typically they're gonna give you a very high msrp they're gonna start hey let's start here and then you can use the, the information that you got from two car and say hey no I, i've seen that these cars start at this msrp um so can we start there and then you go from there and uh they're they're saying you know they'll start saying hey i you know i can't go below this and then you show them the green portion and say well if you can't go below that then i can't afford that this is what i can't afford help me get into this green zone um so that's that's the order you should be using them in how to use them for uh, start with the msrp spreadsheet 
if they don't uh, meet, if they are not coming close with uh, within the fair MSRP, uh, then show them that you know what the car is going to cost after all the incentives and taxes and fees, and um, and then verify that whatever down payment you have after that final price is going to be uh, enough to put you in the green zone for the monthly payments. Purchasing a new versus used car uh, in this current market. For a new car, it's going to be easier uh, to get a deal because the dealer can play around with the MSRP. Uh, and typically it's going to be better stock of the same car um, so uh, you won't be competing with other customers for a one-of-a-kind configuration on the car uh, for a used car I found out that it's harder to negotiate the price on the sticker um, I, I think it has something to do with the fact that they've already calculated their margins and they need to make a profit on, on a purchase on a used car that they accepted as a trade-in or something so from my experience in the last two cars, uh, when I bought used cars, it's been really hard to negotiate the used car. Um, the trick here is uh, the trade-in. So you can't um, you can't really get a price uh, uh, a lot off the MSRP for a used car, but you can negotiate the trade-in value of your car and bring that up to make the difference. So in the last year, the price of used cars um, has gone up over 20%. It's the highest ever recorded. Um, and in fact, I had a friend tell me that he almost purchased a car that was used for more than a new car he got. And so, you know, I gave him this talk about it and I told him, hey, it might be worth considering looking into new cars. And he couldn't believe that the new car was going to cost them less than the used card he was looking for. Uh, the other way to look at this is that if you have a trading value, uh, if you have a trade in, a trade in available, it's a great time to trade in because trading values have gone up 75% or something like that in the last year. So you're getting a lot of money for your trade in. Um, and that's great because like I said, the trade in is your ace card. So you come into the dealership, and they uh, let's pretend that we're purchasing a used car. You come into the dealership, they don't budge. Uh, they say, "Hey, the best I can get do is five hundred bucks. Do you have a trade-in?" Uh, <laughs> you say, "No. Um, the car that I came in is, you know, I'm gonna give it down to my sister. I'm gonna give it to my daughter. They don't really know, so you just say no." You keep continuing to negotiate the price. And if they really don't budge, you know, I, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I did with 2018. I pretended like I was walking away. They they wouldn't come down. Um, I think the best that they came down was $900 from the sticker price. And it was, um, it was like 26,000, 26,000 something. And I needed to be at twenty thousand. That was my 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 budget, twenty thousand. So I was asking a lot. I was asking a lot, but I knew I had the the trade in as my ace card. So I wanted to get them to come really low to that twenty thousand. Um, but they didn't budge more than nine hundred. So I pretended I was walking away. And uh, and then I turned around and I said, Hey, you know, what if I do throw this trade in in there? What can you give me for that trade in? Um. The guy's eyes lit up, and he's like, "Okay, let me go see what I can do." And uh, and sure enough, he came back with a a price that put me in that twenty thousand range. He he offered me uh, close to the highest point that Kelly Blue Book was offering on that car. Um, so I got like five thousand something for it. Um, so use your use that Ace card as best as you can. Wait till the end. Wait till the last minute, and then offer it. And have have that uh, value get you closer to the to the to the goal. Uh, t -t -t the test drive. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna give you my non-popular opinion on this. Um, 
I think you can skip the test drive if the car is brand new and if you're familiar with the model. By that I mean you've owned a previous model or you've test driven it at a different dealership. Both of which, which both of these cases I've lived through. Uh, I went from a 2012 Camry to a 2018. I already knew in my mind I was going to love it. Um, so didn't need to test drive it. And for the RAV4 case, I walked out of one dealership after test driving it there. And so at the next dealership, I told them I don't need a test drive. I'm here to purchase a car. Uh, I already know how the vehicle drives. And it's the exact same model that I, was, uh, that I test drove at the other dealership. Um, so this saves you some time and that awkward talk that they give you in the car. I, I hate that. But, you know, so if you're looking to save some time, there you go. Not a lot of people skip the test drive, though. I, I do have to say that. It's a low percentage. But I'm not saying skip the visual inspection. Do not skip the visual inspection. Even if you're not test driving the car, make sure that you tell them that you at least want to take a look at it. So you go in there, you can sit in it and just look at the bumpers, make make sure there's no scratches. Do not skip the visual inspection. Um, you can also tell a dealer, hey, you know, I don't need a test drive. I, I want to talk numbers. I, I want to, you know, evaluate my time and uh, I want to get this sell over as quickly as possible. Uh, if you're worried about the defects, if it has any major defects, then, you know, most states, I think it's a federal law, have lemon laws where any major defects, the dealer has to uh, be responsible for it. So, you know, it's not like you're going to drive off with a brand new car and the motor's going to die in, in the next week. So you should be covered there. Uh, for used cars, obviously, I uh, don't have it here, but for used cars, make sure you do test drive it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So, t -t -t closing the deal here. Uh, all right, I'm going to try to wrap it up here because uh, this video is getting kind of long. So, closing the deal. Uh, salesperson typically has to discuss with the manager, and then the manager comes over to either, like, finalize the, the, the sale, or they'll probably talk to you a little bit about the, um, the trading value and why they can't do that or can't do this or not. So that's how it's happened to me in the past. I'm not your experience might be different, but if you know at these at these final moments, this is uh, you can still save a little bit of money. So <laughs> round down any price that they're throwing at you. You know if they're saying, hey, here's twenty nine thousand. How about how does twenty nine thousand nine hundred eighty nine sound? And if that's within your budget, that's great. But you know just say, hey, uh, you know I like easy no easy round numbers that uh, make the math easier. So can you come down to 2,900 uh, and 900 even? You know, I, I, I'll th I think this will be easier for, for, for me to do math or whatever. So that worked for me <laughs> last time I did it. Um, it's also good if you do math in your head, uh, you know, just quickly tell them, hey, you know, this, this is the price, can, can we narrow it this, it will be that. So, uh, yeah, just try to get a little bit more savings at the end. If they don't uh, budge from their price and, you know, you're almost happy with it, but not quite. You wish you would have gotten a couple hundred dollars more uh, off the price, then see if they can do anything for you. You know, uh, see if they'll throw in all weather mats or even ask if they'll do a free car detail uh, voucher for the for the future. Um, yeah, just there's there's no um there's no shame in trying right you're trying to save money so just just throw it out there and uh just make sure you're happy before you sign any paperwork or do any handshakes that's what's important here that you're feeling comfortable otherwise remember that biggest strength you can just walk away uh and then uh ta -ta, we're almost wrapping up here add-ons and extended warranties so I understand that this is their job and it's part of the whole experience of going to a dealership, but watch out for the person selling the add-ons. At some point during the transaction uh, process, somebody may come. It hasn't happened to me all the times, but it, I think I, th two out of the four times, um, 
a person will come. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm calling this the, the movie theater concession stand of a dealership. Be, they're trying to sell you uh, their brand for an increased price, right? So it's like buying uh, snow cones or whatever you buy at the candy at the dealer at the movie theater, and you're paying like six bucks for a box. Um, so just you you don't need those Toyota uh, or Honda floor mats and uh, the door guards and all this other stuff that they're trying to sell you. Um, you know, just say no thanks. Moving on to extended warranties, do you need them? It's going to increase the cost. So you have to account for that in your budget. Do you, um, Is it worth it for you? I personally never have have benefited from them, so I stopped purchasing them uh, two cars ago. Um, the new cars uh, or com come with warranty already in the motor and and drivetrain or drivetrain. No, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, the motor and the um, drivetrain, so it should be covered uh, any major defects. Uh, for used cars, you know, most of the time they don't come with a warranty unless it's certified. So just be mindful of that. Um, but yeah, so if you're financing through the dealership, um, or I've always financed through the dealership. So I don't know if it's, uh, if it's the same, if you're not financing through a dealership, but I guarantee you, if you're going to be signing paperwork with them, that they will try to sell you something. Uh, tire protection, extended electric, electrical uh, components warranties, uh, motor warranties, uh, upholstery warranties. These people are very good at what they do and they're trying to squeeze the last dollars out of you in the final stages. I, I really had to, like last time, tell the guy, no, I'm all set. and uh, And he kept insisting. And he lesson another lesson to to learn here is pay attention to what they're offering you financially for for this final portion uh you want to go with the least amount of months to pay all right so make sure that the months that you've calculated in your budget are the same months that they're trying to sell you on the loan the, this guy was trying to sell me like a loan for 70 what is it 72 months and uh i said no that's not that's not what i want i need Show me the the numbers for the sixty month loan, uh, and he, I never forget. He's like, oh, he says, oh, so you're one of the smart guys, huh? Man, that I was, you know, I was polite, but inside I was raging because that just showed me how sleazy these guys are. Not every, I, I'm sure it's not everybody, but some of them are out there mm, just to get those dollar last dollars off of you, so look at your sheet if it doesn't match what you have in front of you um if it doesn't fall within that green zone you don't want that 60 months 48 months whatever you've already planned stick to it um and i think that concludes whoops sorry i skipped a slide here i think that concludes everything so just let's sum it up here know your strengths be prepared uh, know what car you want. Uh, know how what your your budget is. Bring the spreadsheets and uh, have confidence. You know, hype hype yourself a little bit. Um, go through the motions in your head and be prepared to know what to say. Um, stick to the green zone. Save your trading uh, for that moment that you need to play your ace card and. Uh, Close out strong. Try to get those little amounts uh, off the price by rounding down. And uh, just remember, you've got this. So I appreciate you guys sticking around till the end if you're still listening. I hope this helps you. Um, I'll certainly pass it along to my children and my family members. And uh, I, I like to say that I'm not a professional. These are just experiences that I've learned from purchasing my cars uh i'm not a salesperson i'm an engineer so i do love spreadsheets 
and numbers and research. Um, so any questions, please feel free to write in the comments. Thank you for watching. Have a good day and good luck.